Welcome to the Homeschool Show from North Carolinians for Home Education. Our goal is to help you homeschool with confidence and joy. I'm your host, Matthew McDill, and we have as our co-host again, Amanda Wares. Hey, Amanda. Yes. Hey, how's it going? Great. Good to see you. Yeah, what good to see you. What do we have today? Okay, so in homeschool news, homeschoolers are fighting legislation in South Carolina. So we are going to hear about that and some more information about the upcoming Thrive Homeschool Conference. Then we are going to listen to a conversation with some homeschool pioneers. I have loved this series. It's been so great. And so today we're going to listen to part of a conversation you had with Spencer and Debbie Mason. That'll be wonderful. And then you will share some wisdom from the word on the purpose of life. That is a great question. And then on Homeschool Helps, I am going to continue the series on homeschooling different age groups. Today, we will talk about homeschooling high school. So that will be a lot of fun. All right. That's great. Okay. Heading into homeschool news, one of the things we want to do is keep you informed, uh, not only in what's going on in North Carolina, but also uh, across the nation and even the world uh, related to homeschooling and parental rights. So uh, we're going to let you know that there um, are homeschoolers in South Carolina who are fighting a bill that would give them access to government money. And so Mm -hmm. I'm going to read a little bit from an action alert from HSLDA, the Homeschool Legal Defense Association. Uh, The title, Urgent Action Needed to Protect Homeschool Freedom from Government Help. And help, it is in quotations. I'm going to read a little bit. It says, the 10 most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm here from the government and I'm here to help. Uh, So said President Ronald Reagan. And this is why we need urgent action to oppose H5164, a bill which expands a South Carolina's education scholarship trust fund to homeschool families. South Carolina Mm -hmm. home educators have consistently told our elected officials, thanks, but no thanks when it comes to money from the government. And so Mm -hmm. um, this is a kind of a big topic because even in North Carolina this last year, we had a lot of Um, people uh, representing us trying to give us money, trying to give homeschoolers Mm -hmm. uh, different scholarship access. Um, And Mm -hmm. we were pretty much just saying the same thing. And the bottom line reason is uh, with government money, um, if immediately, if not immediately, eventually uh, we would be concerned would bring government regulation. And we want to make sure that homeschooling is free and that parents have uh, the full freedom and authority uh, to, to decide what's going on in their homeschool. Anyway, so now you know what's going on in South, South Carolina. Uh, you can watch that and, and pray for those guys who are uh, fighting that legislation. Absolutely. So important. And I think it's not just in South Carolina. It's really everywhere. So we need to be informed. Yeah. All right, right, let's talk some more about our upcoming Thrive Conference. Um, again, May 23rd through 25th in Winston-Salem. And we have some workshops that are focused on struggling learners. Are you homeschooling struggling learners or kids with any type of special needs? We have workshops for you. And I love that we have this. It's a special um, passion of mine. So to find these particular workshops, you can go to nche.com slash schedule and look at the workshops slash keynotes tab. And the workshops that are focused on struggling learners are labeled with an L. So any of the ones that have an L beside them, those are for you. And here are some of the ones that we have just for you. We have financial resources for homeschooling struggling learners. The importance of movement in early brain development. When your struggling learner hates, struggles, or refuses to read. And then writing for the struggling learner. Helping your neurodiverse child thrive. Learning challenges in math. Challenge no more. And teaching the trades. Those are going to be great. So Mm -hmm. good. And then a couple more of our FAQs that we have, those frequently asked questions. Do we need to sign up for certain workshops? No, you do not need to do that. You choose 
which ones you want to go to, and you just go to those. And we will help you. There is a whole team of people that would love to help you find those workshops, find where you're going. So just, just ask. And then is child care provided? No, it is not. Um, however, we do have a children's program. So I have talked to a lot of people recently about this. Um, you are welcome to bring your children with you. A lot of people do. You're welcome to take them with you into workshops as long as they are not um, distracting because we do record those workshops. Um, but we do have a children's program for ages three through 12. And this is a separate registration from the Thrive Conference registration. But children do need to be registered for the conference first. You register for the conference and then for Thrive, and then you register them separately for the Giant Cow Children's Program. Um, we also have other activities for children that are super popular. I encourage you to check these out. We have a chess tournament on Thursday of the conference from 1.30 to 5.50. And this year we are having a fabulous fossils class. I am super excited about this. Um, you need to go to the website to check this out. It's going to be really great. That is also Thursday morning from 9 to 12 noon. So you go to nche.com slash thrive for all the information about these different things. That's right. One of the things, as you mentioned, is we have a whole team of people at the conference <clears throat> who volunteer to make things yeah. happen. And what's important to realize is um, almost everything that's going on uh, with NCHE behind the scenes or at the conferences or online is fueled by uh, volunteers. Um, uh, I am one of the few exceptions uh, exceptions as executive director uh, who who has uh, who's an employee of NCHE. However, all of our NCHE board and all of our liaisons and all the people who support those teams are volunteers. Um, and so uh, we want to see, we want to ask you if you would be interested uh, in helping us help parents homeschool with confidence and joy. And there's a lot of different areas. Um, just to throw some out to pique your interest, we have administration, advertising and sponsorships, blog, field trips, finances, fundraising, graphic design. Greenhouse Magazine, legislation, marketing, mentoring, multicultural support, regional support, social media, special needs, the homeschool show, yay, uh, Thrive Conference, webinars, website, and we could probably keep going. So these are mm -hmm. all areas that if, if you have interest or talent and you want to help us out, um, you can go to nche.com slash partner slash serve. And there we have an application that tells you more. And you can tell us more about you and your interest. Um, so we love our volunteers. We have a really fun, really great team. And um, we need you. Uh, we need volunteers to do what we're doing. This is a ministry that we really care about. So if you love homeschooling, you love NCHE, and you want to help, then uh, please check out that link and let us know. So now moving on to homeschool conversations. Uh, once again, happy 40th anniversary, NCHE. Uh, it's really exciting that uh, in 1984, um, almost a year ago now, in just a few weeks, um, NCHE was begun. One of the some of the first uh, meetings took place, and so one of the things we're doing this year is interviewing homeschool pioneers, um, and we have a very special couple that we're uh, going to give some. Um, Get, show part of our conversation with, and that is Spencer and Debbie Mason. They're extra special because they are still on our board. They've been on the board for decades. Uh, they are the longest standing board members that we have. We so love and appreciate them for the amazing amount of work that they do and their dedication. Um, and so uh, we're really looking forward to hearing the different parts of our conversation with them. So let's check out uh, this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell us how you started homeschooling in the first place and why. Okay, um, well, this goes all the way back to 1981, and we had an almost one-year-old at the time, and we were in the car driving home from something, and on the radio, this was in South Carolina, which is where we lived at the time, something came on about them taking a family to, 
court to take their kids away or something because they were homeschooling. And we were getting out of the car. You know how you have these times in your life where it's just stuck in your memory. You'll never forget that moment where I'm walking, I got Alexa and I'm walking around the car and I said to him, did you hear that? That was terrible. How horrible to not let your kids go to school. And his response was, oh, I thought that sounded like a good idea. <laughs> so I was horrified because I was an education major. So all I could think of were these films we had seen of the really poor country dad sitting on the porch with no shoes on and how he wouldn't let his kids go to school. And it was just this picture. And I really did see a film like that. You say I you did, did too. too. I saw that. So at that time, it started this discussion of education. And as I said, Alexa was not even a year yet, probably about nine or 10 months. And right after that, um, it wasn't long. I think Raymond Moore, who was one of the fathers of homeschooling, he had just published a book called Homegrown Kids. And he had some previous books that were related, Better Late Than Early and School Can Wait. But this was his first real homeschooling book. And so he was on a lot of the talk shows. He was on a talk show back then called Phil Donahue. He was on Focus on the Family. He was on um, 700 Club. And everywhere I turned, there was Raymond Moore. And so I thought, well, this is interesting. So. I went to the library and I said, uh, I want all your home books on homeschooling. And they had one book and it was John Holtz, who was also another father of homeschooling, um, but he was the more secular side. And um, I checked it out. And between what I was seeing on TV and reading the book, I just thought, this sounds, this is what I want to do. This sounds great. This is the path we're going to be on. When I heard it on the radio, I thought it was a, a really good idea. I hated school. And I wanted our kids to love learning. And so my thought was immediately, ah, this is how we can love learning. We can, we can let them chase down those rabbit holes when they want to explore deeper. Uh, we can do things that are interesting that help them learn at the same time. And uh, so to me, it just made a lot of sense. I thought, oh, that's a really good idea when I heard it on the radio. Well, something I want to add is I think the things that drew me to it are different than maybe a lot of people today who have bad experiences in public school. Because at that point, you know, our kids were so far from school, we weren't pulling them out. But it was that developmental learning and having my children, OLX at the time, be able to learn as she goes as fast as she wants to or as slow as she needs to. And that individualized education just seemed, it was so true knowing, because I, you know, I learned it in education and that and the lack of peer pressure and just to be able to be with family, there was those things just really connected with me. And, um, and I, I, I wouldn't say I love school, but I was good at school. So I was successful. And so I had a completely different experience than Spencer did, whereas he hated school. So, um, so we, you know, different, but I also realized that I learned for the grade. I did not learn. I didn't care if I ever learned anything. I wanted to make A's and if it took memorizing that material for the test, then that's what I was going to do. And so if I learned something along the way, which I did, then it was a byproduct. It wasn't the goal to learn. It was a byproduct of, of making the grade. Whereas Spencer loved learning. He didn't care about the grade. And it was obvious. <laughs> so, <laughs> Debbie and I were in the Navy and uh, we took a long uh, 30 days of vacation throughout Europe. And we were in Vienna. And there were lots of big government buildings in Vienna. And Debbie asked me, why does this little country have all these big buildings? And I said, well, this is the capital of the Ottoman Empire. And she said, what is the Ottoman Empire? And I said, you didn't learn that in school. <laughs> and, but again, she was memorizing a long, enough to make an A, and I was making C's, but I was learning stuff while I was And school. she probably got an A on that test. She did. <laughs> but she didn't know what it was. <laughs> so I think that was the difference is, and I've really, there were times that 
when I was in school where the teacher would hit a subject that I wanted to know more about, but I couldn't learn more about it because we had to go to the next class. How did you actually start? Where were you and when you started? And did you know other people who were homeschooling? Whoa. Well, considering the fact that my oldest wasn't even one, that is a very slow, long story. But basically, for, at first it just meant that we kept her home from things like, we didn't do preschool, mother's morning out, she was home. Um, and then we had number two, and we were just living life with two preschoolers. So there was not really any homeschooling going on as far as academics, it was more, and also when we got started, one of Raymond Morris' things was better late than early or delayed academics, readiness learning, you can call it all of that. So I was very anxious to get started, but but knowing what I felt was best best for the kids, I was patient. So I was reading a lot of books about you know education and what as everything that we came out on homeschooling. There's a few came out through the years um, of those preschool years. Um, so there wasn't. It was just natural learning, encouraging that for the preschool. Then where we then we get into the trip to North Carolina. So I was in South Carolina back then. So when Alexa was an old four, and then Scott was two, and I was pregnant with Levi, number three, we moved to North Carolina. And at that time, it's hard to answer this question without starting to get into the NCHE story and the law. Is that fine? So we move here. We tried. Spencer had a sales territory. And it encompassed northern, the north part of South Carolina here where Rock Hill. So at that point, they were putting people in jail in North Carolina. And we knew that. We had heard the news. We knew that. And at South Carolina at the time, um, at, at least I had a little bit longer and we knew more about the South Carolina situation, felt more comfortable with it. And we tried to buy a house in, in Rock Hill right over the line from Charlotte. And it just would not work. And knowing what I know now, looking back, I just go, God just kept that from working because he wanted us in North Carolina. I firmly believe that he wanted us in North Carolina. So we said, okay, God, I have a four year old. She's almost five. Compulsory attendance is seven. I have two years to make this work to figure out what to do. And we laugh now that we talked about, well, if they start to put us in jail, then Spencer, you're going to jail and I'm going out the back door and I'm going to drive to Tennessee with my mother. Of course, we never got close to that. We were very blessed and fortunate it, it, that the, right after we put a contract on our house and about a month before we moved into the house, yeah, about a month, what came down and it, it is in the history stories you might have heard is the Del Conte case. It is like the big thing in the homeschool history is the Del Conte case. And the Del Contes were a family who were taken to court and they went through many court trials, winning and losing and appeals, and it just kept going on. And we weren't here for most of that because we right there in May of 85, Del Conte's won the last and final decision by the courts that a home school qualifies as a private school under the North Carolina non-public school law. It is a non-public school. So before I even got to compulsory attendance, we were fine. And it was then we moved into our house and a month, a week later, we went to NCHE's first real conference in 85 when Raymond Moore was speaking. And at that point, we joined NCHE and, you know, got involved. Back then, there were so few of us, so few homeschoolers in North Carolina that we were all involved. If you were a member, you were involved. And by the time we got to the next conference, I think I was speaking and working on speakers and it you know it just went on from there okay now it's time for some wisdom from the word uh, one time i was shopping at trader joe's and i saw one of the employees walking around with a big sign and the sign said ask me anything and so uh, being a little bit uh, mischievous, I walked up to him and said, I have a question for you. He said, great. And I said, what is the meaning of life? 
And I stopped and looked at him. And of course, he went a little pale and his eyes got big and thought, oh, this is not the question I was prepared for. They didn't cover that in training. Uh, I assumed that's what he was thinking. Finally, I kind of broke out into a grin and he was relieved to find out that I didn't really expect him to answer that question, although we had a good conversation. Uh, last week, we talked about the question, where did I come from and the importance of general revelation, creation and special revelation scripture to understand who God is. And then we asked the question, why am I here? Is it possible for us to answer the question, what is my purpose? And of course, if we believe that we came from God, then where do we look to find out our purpose? We look to God. Now, as your children grow up, as they become conscious, as they try to think about where did I come from, they're going to also, as they continue to mature, also ask the question, why am I here and what purpose do I have? And I just want to stop and say, this is probably one of the most important questions that you are going to be able to guide your children through answering. And of course, you want them to turn to the Lord and turn to his word to find out. Now, we know that one of the most important answers to this question uh, was given by Jesus. When uh, one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing and saw that he answered them well, asked, what is the greatest commandment of all? And Jesus said, the greatest commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And then he threw in the bonus answer. And the second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So the most important thing, uh, the purpose and mission that God gives us is to love him and to love others. The fact that God's answer to this is love is very important. Most of the time when we think of religious things, uh, we think of doing religious works. And I remember even as a Christian, understanding the gospel, growing up in a Christian home, that I was still working very hard to try to be a good Christian. And that was pri my primary calling. And I remember it was even in, I was in college uh, when I read this scripture from Mark 12 and realized he's not primarily looking for me to do good things. He is wanting my heart and my worship and my service with a heart of worship. And that made a big difference to me. That's a different perspective. And so um, that's something that you can really emphasize and, and point out with the kids. And the other thing is that this purpose brings up the necessity of the gospel. Because if how are we going to have a relationship with God? And there's only one way uh, because of our sin, and that is through Jesus Christ. And so you're able to talk through the fact that we are separated from God in our relationship. We can't love him because of sin. We've broken the laws of God. And because he's a good judge, he will uh, punish us for our sin as he should. That is just. Um, but he loves us so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, um, as a man in real history. And he died on the cross. And when he did that, when he did that, he took my punishment on himself. He took my sin on himself and paid for it uh, and received the wrath of God, the judgment of God for me. Now, when I place my faith in him and I, and I surrender my life to him as Lord, uh, which is repenting of my sin, then the Bible says I'm saved, which means I'm saved from the power of sin. I'm saved from the penalty of sin. This is the gospel. And this is the most important truth, you know, with the purpose of God of how can we fulfill it is the good news of Jesus Christ. So this is just an encouragement to you. Keep it basic. Keep it simple. Where did I come from? Why am I here? How do I fulfill that through Jesus Christ? These are the most important truths you can keep uh, saying over and over to your children as you disciple them. And as you're homeschooling, don't forget that... Um, the spiritual training, the spiritual education and answering these questions is uh, way more important than even all the other academic things that you may be working on. Welcome to Homeschool Helps with Amanda. I'm Amanda Wares, Homeschool Helps Director with NCHE. So we are continuing on in this series of homeschooling different age groups. And today I'm going to focus on homeschooling high school. 
Now, I always say there were two times in my almost 20 year homeschool journey that I really was nervous or scared. Um, one was when I was making the decision to start homeschooling. I was very afraid at that point of what am I doing? Oh, you know. And then the second time was when my oldest daughter was getting to the age of high school. It feels big. It feels important and more consequential somehow than the younger ages of homeschooling. You know, people always say, oh, you can't screw up kindergarten, but it really feels like you can screw up high school. Um, but let me encourage you today that I have, and on our board, there are many, many parents that have successfully homeschooled high school and graduated their kids and they are productive members of society and it all works out well in the end. So let me give you a few of my best tips for homeschooling high school. First off, it always feels like, and it feels this way to me as well, even after homeschooling for so long, it feels like homeschooling high school is somehow very different. But the reality is that it's really not. You are continuing on in this education journey, in this life. You are discipling your now teenager versus your five-year-old. But really, it doesn't feel different from day to day. Okay? So that's the first thing. The only major difference would be high school maybe requires a little more record keeping. <laughs> Um, I give grades in high school, whereas in younger ages, I do not give grades. So that's a little difference, but the reality of the actual process of homeschooling is not different. So that's the first thing. The second thing would be continue. As I said last time about middle school, in high school, it's so easy to get caught up in the academics and, oh, we're getting ready for college or we're getting ready for career, whatever it is. It's easy to get so focused on that, that you lose the relational part. And I strongly encourage you again, do not lose that relational aspect of homeschooling. It is, in my opinion, the most beautiful, the most important part of homeschooling is that ability, the time, the um, that homeschooling allows you to have this relationship, this unique relationship with your child, whether they are five or 18. And it's so important that in high school, you don't just say, oh, now you're in high school, go do your work. And you lose that relational part. Don't do that. Relationship in the end, that relationship with your child is more important than the academics. I know it doesn't feel that way when you're looking at homeschooling high school, but it really is. So as somebody who has graduated three, I have one left that I'm homeschooling. This is my best advice. Relationship is more important than academics. The academics will come, but the relationship is more important. So don't sacrifice your relationship with your teenager on the altar of academics. Don't do it. So that's another thing. Um, another tip would be in high school, this is a great time to um, allow more autonomy, more independence. We talked about beginning that process in middle school. I think high school is a great time to continue that process as their maturity and their development allows it. Um, you don't just want to one day walk in and say, here is your list of schoolwork and you need to be in charge of all of this if they've never done that before. Um, it's a process. It's a growing learning process. So one thing that I have done that has been really success successful with my high schoolers is to give them a list. And depending on, again, maturity and responsibility, 
that list could have all of their work for the whole week. What do they need to get done this week? And they have the freedom then if they get that done in two days, awesome. Then they have all this time to pursue their interests and passions and the things that they like to do. Um, if they drag it out, then again, that is their responsibility and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with, you know, doing school all week long, a week's worth of school. But again, it puts the ball kind of in their court and you will have to see, you will have to judge as the parent, are they responsible? How are they handling this? And you may have to pull back on that freedom and level of independence or you know, they may do well with it. It just, it so varies depending on maturity, depending on, you know, responsibility and how all that goes. So my best last tip for homeschooling high school is keep those records. I know, I know, I know, but you have to, you have to keep a record. You have to keep a transcript. I've talked about the legalities, the law and um, all the things, graduation requirements, admission requirements. I have talked about all of that before on this segment. So I'm not going to cover that again, but you do have to keep those records. So do that. Um, I am always willing Many of us at NCHE are always willing to help people with that, but do that. And another thing, I keep thinking of more tips, but another tip is um, high school is a great time if you haven't already done this. It is a great time to um, outsource at least something. You want to expose your student to a teacher, a mentor, whatever you want to call it, other than you, before they graduate, before they leave the house. I um, have had some experiences. I teach co-op classes for high schoolers. And sometimes, you know, I've seen kids that get to the end or maybe they get to where they're taking driver's ed or they're going to the community college or they're going to college or getting a job or whatever it is, and they've never experienced um, either having a teacher other than their parent, or they've never experienced um, being responsible to another adult other than their parents. And I think that's an important skill that they need to have um, before they leave your house. So I would encourage you as a parent homeschooling high school Find something, find some, either a class or a club or something where your high schooler, your teenager can be responsible to another adult besides you. I think that's really important. Those are my best tips for homeschooling high school. And I really hope this helps today. All right. Thank you so much for joining us this week. As always, we want to hear from you. So if you have any feedback, you have questions, please send us an email at thehomeschoolshow at nche.com and help others find the show. Um, su subscribe, rate, review, all of those things on Apple Podcasts and on YouTube. If you think this show would be helpful to your friends, and I hope you do, that's our goal please share it with them. To learn more about how to subscribe and about the show, go to nche.com slash the homeschool show. That's right. And until next week, continue to homeschool with confidence and joy.